want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad. Hello there. This is Faith Moment. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace boldly, without fear, but full of our faith in you. We release our most holy faith. Fathers, nothing of me, all of you, we pray for divine understanding. We pray right now, O oh God, for illumination in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on your people. Let revelation knowledge abound and increase. Let everything, O oh God, today be of you and nothing of me in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people even the more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me just um, bring salutations. Apostle Magritte, Brady Haynes, God bless you, woman of God. Hey, Apostle, Apostle Pa Albert Owusu, Enchi, God bless you, with your prophetess wife, Rama. God bless you. God bless you. Helmut, I salute you in Jesus' name. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. It is a wonderful week, a beginning of another week that the Lord has given unto us. We are going to be excited, I mean, we're excited and we're going to be um, celebrating just throughout the week, every day of our lives. Why? Because God has been good to us. Beloved, today I want to talk to you about the work of the Holy Spirit. We've been, if you've been following uh, this ministry for some time, you will realize that uh, we've been dealing about or talking about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it so important to uh, that God has now released us from this area? It is because um, looking at the, the early church and uh, today's church, there's you see a lot of difference. You see quite a difference in the, the way we operate in, in this dispensation and that of the early church. The early church depended pretty much on the Holy Spirit. The early church depended um, seriously on the Holy Spirit to do uh, all that uh, they were they were assigned to do and to witness about the uh, the birth, um, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, in this dispensation, in this to, uh, or today's Christian, um, we, we see lack of, uh, of that. We see lack of that and for that, the reason why I can say this is because, um, look at, the, look at the, um, the, the, the trend in which um, today's Christians operate and look at even the church today. I mean, the, the, like somebody says, there's no power in the church. There's no power. There's no power to heal and power to set free. And we've been dealing and talking more of academics and um, um, and not really um, activating or engaging the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is also here with us that um, uh, we need Him in every area of our life. However, we are not engaging him. And that is not good. That is not good because we need to understand something. That God has his things in place. He's not an, he, God is not an author of confusion. Are you listening? He's not an author of confusion. And so he has put things in place. He's a God of order. Madhu, Madhu, God bless you. Praise the Lord to you. He's a God of order. And so... If we if we become disorderly in his vineyard, well, we don't see the manifestation of his power. We we don't see the manifestation of his power, and that is what why we're not seeing, you know, healings and um, 
you know, dead things resurrected uh, in our mix, the way we, we, we ought to see it. And so um, it's, it's important that we understand um, and to know the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the God heard. The Holy Spirit is God. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, uh, He's here. God is still with us to help us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. But beloved, if we don't understand who He is and what uh, He's here to do, we will not engage Him and continually be um, doing things outside the principle and outside uh, the policies of God. Now, We've been talking so much about him, and today we want to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. This past weekend, for those of you who uh, followed <clears throat> um, the interview with the UK radio, uh, we did, I believe you learned one or two concerning uh, who the Holy Spirit is. Who the Holy Spirit is. Now, the Holy Spirit, like I said, um, was give, is given or was given to us, or was given to us. Uh, <clears throat> To convict the unbeliever and uh, to comfort the believer. The Holy Spirit is come to convict the unbeliever and uh, to comfort the believer. Okay? The Bible says that he never speaks of himself, but the things that is of Christ. The Holy Spirit never, never speaks of himself, but the things of Christ. The Holy Spirit bears witness with the things of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the things of Jesus Christ. So you see that um, it is very important and essential part of our lives in this dispensation, the Holy Spirit. So we're going to be talking about, about the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we spoke about the person of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you, if you miss any of this uh, series, um, I will indulge you to uh, go to uh, go and check get more of this information from the YouTube account. It will be a blessing to you, all right? Go to the YouTube. Uh, I believe it's uh, address is Patrick. The address is on your screen right now, so um, uh, get all the information you need and uh, get the series. It will help you out. And uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's real. It's not a myth. The Holy Spirit is real. It's not a myth. Now, um, when you don't see something, don't think that it doesn't exist when you don't see it. I, I, I posed this question the other day. How many of you see the air? One, how many of you see the air? Air. A-I-R. Air. Yet, we know that the, 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 the air exists. Right? Because we feel it. We feel the air. But we don't see it. Bible says that no one has ever seen God. <laughs> uh, man of God, Sam, God bless you. No one has ever seen God. Now, so the fact that you don't see the Holy Spirit. Now, listen to his name, Spirit. You don't see Spirit. You and I are even spirits in a bodily, this earthly body, bodily clothes. And that is why we see each other as but the real as who we really are, we are spirit. Are you listening? And so the fact that you don't see the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is a myth and or the Holy Spirit does not exist. Oh, he is real and exists for real. Now Jesus came in the in the in the bodily form because um the the legal entry point to this earth, the legal entry point to this earth is through a womb of a woman. Are you listening? As a, to live as a human being, you have to come through the womb of a woman. So we see that demonstration um, of Jesus coming through that path. Now, the reason Jesus had to come in the bodily form to be you like you and me, it is, was for you and I to see all right, Jesus came to set up an example of the fact that we believers who are going to be living on this earth in this bodily form, we have to have an understanding 
of the supernatural. Jesus brought us, okay, in his physical body, but the things he did was spiritual. And so he brought us to the place of understanding that though you are in this bodily form, yet your things must be, your mindset must be, your dealings must be that of the spiritual. Because that is who we really are. Okay? <laughs> All right. Okay? That's right. Man of God, keep preaching with me. I'm telling you, it's your, your time has come now. Albert, he says that the scripture says that it's only, only the fool who say that there is no God. <laughs> Only the fool. That's what, absolutely. Only the fool says that. That there is no God. Amen. Garnet, God bless you. All right. So, again, the fact that you do not see the Holy Spirit does not mean the Holy Spirit is a myth and it does not exist. He's, 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 as, he's as practical as you, you see my face, my black face sitting here. But the Holy Spirit is as so practical that uh, you, 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 your inability to know who he, he is and, uh, and, and his works makes you think that he does not exist um, or is a myth. But trust me, come to the place of um, understanding and to know him. You will see him very, very, very practical. And uh, because some of, some, some of us walk, I mean, we are walking with him. We are, we are, he dwells with us and in us and we're walking with him and we see like we see him yeah i see the holy spirit in every area of my life now unlike unlike those days but i see him in every area of my life are you listening to me and so you have to have this understanding now if you have not engaged him it's because two things that i can that comes to my mind because you don't know him and how are you going to know him you're going to know him by the Spirit of God in you. Your spirit will, will connect with Him. Are you listening? Your, the Spirit of God in you. And so, therefore, check yourself. Does the Spirit of God live in you? Because you, you will, the Spirit in you will, will identify with who the Holy Spirit is. Are you listening? And so, um, I want to talk to you about the work of the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit um, came, all right, came to convict the unbeliever and uh, to comfort the believer. The Holy Spirit came to uh, convict the unbeliever, convict the world. The world do not know the Holy Spirit, Jesus says that. The world do not know the Holy Spirit, but you do know the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you know, you know who the Holy Spirit is and begin to walk with Him. Beloved, Walking with the Holy Spirit is, uh, is the best thing that um, you can enjoy. I'm telling you, it's the best relationship you can enjoy. You, it's the best relationship you can enjoy. So I, I want to um, um, bring your attention to the fact that the Holy Spirit is so essential in the life of you, the believer. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's look at the, the, the work of... The, the his works let's look at his works today we we're going to be looking at the work of the holy spirit beloved listen i'm talking about a practical daily life and living your practical daily life and living whichever area of your life if you see the holy spirit if the holy spirit is with you you can see him helping you in every area of your life he he makes a way where there seems to be no way <laughs> are you listening oh yeah he does and so um get 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 practical with the holy spirit all right you know our christian our christianity is not it's a practical lifestyle our christianity is a practical lifestyle uh, our christianity is not it's not a theory our christianity is not um some kind of um you know some things by and by somewhere our Christianity is a lifestyle. It's everyday life. It's everyday life. Now, uh, so let's talk about um, uh, the work of the the Holy Spirit today. All right. Uh, so his work, uh, his work again. One is to convict the unbeliever, and uh, also to 
comfort the believer. Now, let's go to um, John chapter 16. John chapter 16 and uh, look at some scriptures. John the 16 uh, verse. John the 16 verse. Go with me to John chapter 16. John the 16 verse 9. Let's see the work of the Holy Spirit. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels we call it. John chapter 16. Let's look at John chapter 16 verse um, verse 9, <clears throat> John chapter 16, okay? Um, you know what? For the sake of some scriptures, I'm going to help some of you who probably don't have your Bibles with you, but write it down and read. Beloved, I, I am advocating this reading thing um, to every believer, all right? Very important, so that we can see what um, it's written. What is written is written and it cannot be changed. If you don't know what is written, the enemy can give you other gospel. And because you don't know what is written, you may fall for it. Jesus didn't try to do anything spiritual other than telling Satan it is written. Are you listening? Pastor Sorry from India, God bless you. Praise the Lord. All right. Chapter 16 of John, John 16, verse 1. Jesus is speaking here now. Let's listen to Jesus, the Master. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. These things he has spoken to us so that we don't stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. Whoever kills you think that he is offering service to God. Verse 3, And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Jesus is speaking about the world. They will do all manner of things to you because they don't know who he is. Verse 4, But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. I told you of them. And these things... I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Jesus is speaking to the disciples. And we are, we are the, the current disciples of Jesus Christ. So it, that applies to us. Jesus is, is still speaking. All right. Today, right now, through the Holy Spirit. So, so listen. All right. Now, verse 5 says, But now Jesus is still speaking. But now I go away. To him who sent me, and none of you ask me where you are going. But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Now verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is, your, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, watch this now. Jesus is speaking. If I do not go away, the helper... Underline the word helper. The helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. I will send him to you. Are you listening? I will send the helper to you. If I do go, Jesus is speaking. If I do go away, I will send the helper to you. Verse 8, and when he comes, when the helper comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So we, we are dealing about the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? The work of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying that when the Holy Spirit comes, Watch this now, verse 8. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Watch these three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. All right? We look at the breakdown of, this, of these areas. Watch this now. Verse 9. Number 1, sin. Sin because 
they do not believe in me. Jesus is saying that the world do not believe in him. Why? Because the world didn't accept him. The world did not accept him. Okay? Two, righteousness. Remember, sin, righteousness, and judgment. So number one, sin because they did not believe in him. Beloved, I said the other day, God will not judge you because of your sin. God will judge you because of your belief in Jesus Christ. Did you believe in him? Did you accept him? Did you receive him? Are you listening? So if you don't read the scripture, how would you know this? And some believers, some believers are still just beating themselves up as sinners, you know, that their sins can never be raised. They, I mean, it's as though they say they are believers, but yet their actions does not cor correspond with what comes out of their mouth. You, their actions tells you that Jesus has never died. Their actions shows you that Jesus ne has ne never, never resurrected. And their actions shows you that or tells you that Jesus hasn't ascended back to the Father. And therefore send the Holy Spirit here. Are you listening? They are, I'm, talk, I'm talking about believers. Now, so sin, because the world did not receive him, okay, they did not believe in him, and righteousness because, he says, verse 10, of righteousness because I go to my father, and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now, who is the ruler of this world? Who is the ruler of this world? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 tells us who the ruler is. The one who receive, who deceives the whole world. Satan. Or Satan, somebody says Satan. Lucifer. <laughs> Are you listening? Now, he deceives the whole world. He is judged. He is already judged. All right. Verse 12 says, Now, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. The important area I want you to focus here is about the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, if it is, it is to our advantage, so important that he leaves so that he can send the Holy Spirit to us, the helper. Now, I want to pause here for a second and speak to you about the helper the work of the helper. Now, if the Holy Spirit is a helper, then why are we not engaging him to help us in um, our daily life and living? Why are we not doing that? Why is the Holy Spirit not helping us? Why is the Holy... Well, because... The Holy Spirit does not force himself on anybody. Are you listening? To them that receive, he gave them the right to become. To them that receive. To them that receive. Now, you see that when the, the work of the Holy Spirit is that he will what? Judge. All right? The world, why? Because they did not receive, they did not believe in the in Jesus Christ all right so this is so important for you and I to see um, the work of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit um, is here to reprove the world of sin uh, he brings conviction to the souls of the lost the Holy Spirit therefore brings conviction all right to the souls of the lost who is the lost the one who have not found Jesus Christ the one who has not received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. You lost. You are lost. Somebody sent me um, um, some video of uh, a richest man in uh, one of these um, uh, Asian countries who have um, accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And um, his testimony 
said with all the money that he, he had, he realized that he was still lost. There was something missing in his life. Now, just imagine the richest man in this particular country, country talking like that, that with all that money, he felt there was something missing in his life. Beloved, yes, what is missing in your life? You listening to me right now. You listening to me right now. You have not given your life to Jesus. That is what is missing in your life. What you don't know, that it's like you have the money, you have everything, but it's like you are still not happy, you are still not content, you are still not satisfied. There's something missing. Let me tell you what is missing in your life. Jesus. Yes, that's, that's, that is what is missing in your life. And that is why you don't see the fullness of your being. You are still, I mean, you have all the cars in the world. You have all the material things any, any, anybody can have. You have all the money, but yet you are not content. Why? Because Jesus is not part of your life. Accept Jesus right now and see if you were not before. And I'm here to help you to do that. I'm your friend. I'm your servant. I'm asked to come and introduce him to you and let you know what is missing in your life. All right, so that you can receive that as well. You see, Bible tells you and I that there was a young guy who came to Jesus and um, Bible calls him the rich young ruler. The rich. He was rich. Rich in what? Rich in just about everything that he thought he was. And he wanted, he wanted to, to uh, receive, you know, part of the kingdom. Now, God bless you. Watch it. God bless you. He wanted to receive part of the kingdom. So, he came to Jesus. Listen, he came to Jesus and, 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 and asked Jesus. He said, Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? I, I have just about everything, but I, something is missing. I have everything, but something is still missing. Beloved, you will never be happy. You will never be content. You will never be complete without Jesus Christ. And so he came to Jesus. Now, seeing that all that Jesus is doing and how excited and happy the, the, the people around him and all that, he saw that he has everything, but yet there was something missing in his life. And Jesus responded to him and said, you want to inherit the kingdom of God? This is what you have to do. Go and sell what you have. Give to the poor and then come follow me. Give to the poor. The Bible said that he turned away from Jesus very sad. Why? Because he couldn't see himself doing that. The only thing, I mean, you, you have everything but missing one thing. You have all but one. And for you to receive this one to, to have a hundred percent complete, he couldn't do it. Are you in that position today? I don't know you, who I'm talking to, but are you in that place that you have everything, but you, you feel like there's something still missing in your life? You have everything. You have your husband, you have your wife, you have your children, you have your family, you have your business, you have your money, you have your houses, your cars. Just name it. What what? Again, what pertains to life and godliness? You have it, but yet you are not happy. You thought that when you, 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 you receive, you know, you, when you get married, you'll be happy. You realize that you, you, you are married, but, but you're still not happy. Beloved, I, I, <laughs> I tell people this. Listen, don't think that you're going to be married to be happy. Your husband or your wife is not the one going to be joking for you to be happy. No, it's, it's, it's a relationship that you need to establish with your maker. Your happiness comes with, from, from your relationship with your maker. Okay? Now, look, look at the, we spoke about even the night gift. All right? And the nine fruits are, are the fruits of the spirit. Okay, the love, the, the, the peace, the joy, the long suffering and all that. Now, do you see happiness in it? 
Happiness is not part of it. Why? Because happiness comes by the horizontal relationship you have with your maker. When you have that relationship like this, then you can have all these things. So if you don't have those peace, joy, long-suffering, this, that, okay, you don't have this, in, it's because you are lacking this. Because this things, this, this one's here is what you have with people. This one's here is what you have with people. But what you have here is with God. So you tap, you tap from here and then you affect things here. <laughs> Are you seeing the sign? Are you getting the revelation here? All right. You receive and then you can then have that relationship with your neighbors, with your wife, with your friends, with your families, with your nation, with whatever. But if you don't receive that here, if you don't have that relationship here, you cannot have it here. I know I'm speaking to somebody. Are you listening? So what is lacking in your life is not because the person you are living with, you know, is not making you happy. Because the pre how about the person himself or herself? Who needs to be happy? Are you listening? And so happiness, so Jesus told this guy that go, go, all right, give out. There's so much excess in your life. Get rid of them. So much excess. Now, when you have this person, when you have this whole uh, the relationship, listen, I'm telling you, put a billion dollars here right now and then put the Holy Spirit here. Do you, which one would you take? I would take the Holy Spirit because in Him is everything that I need. <laughs> Are you listening? So what is lacking in you is your relationship with your maker. Now, without that relationship, you're not going to be happy. So you may have everything this world can offer. You can have everything the world is offering you. You have a good job. Listen, I know people who are not happy. I know people who, who have good jobs. They have their own bank accounts. They have their own houses. They have their own cars. All those material things that you can think of but yet they are not happy. Now, why are they not happy? They are not happy because they lack the very essential thing in their life. And that is their relationship with the Holy Spirit. The one that, the, the helper. Are you listening? And so, without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you are not going to be happy. And believers, Christians are not. We are not. I mean, we go to the church, the house of God and, and dance and praise God and all that. But immediately we leave that, you know, house of God and coming home and looking at the rest of the, of the week ahead of us. We begin to worry. We begin to worry. God, uh, good morning to you, Barbara. We begin to worry. Why? Because we have not really come to that place of understanding what we have and who we have. Jesus says, it's so important that I go back to the Father. It is to your credit. It is to your advantage. Look at it again. Jesus says, it is to your advantage. All right? It is to your advantage that I leave. It is to your advantage. Look at verse 7 of, uh, of John chapter uh, 16. Look at it. Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. The helper will not come to you. So look at the advantage we have. Look at the advantage that we have of this in this world. Of those who of us who have who have the Holy Spirit and those who do not. Beloved, trust me, people have may have this. I mean, these days is so interesting how the, 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 the children of God are seeking for the things that the world has. 
we we looking for the things that the world has look at how happy the early church was look at how happy the early church were the early church i mean they were happy they were excited they were excited they you know they they they, they didn't count anything that bible said that they didn't count anything as their own but they were even even selling their possessions and and bringing the proceeds to the church so that they, they, the, 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 the apostles will make sure that there's no lack in the church. Do you see lack in the church these days? Yeah. The world is a place of selfishness. And if we're going to, if we're going to you know, adopt the world system, then we're going to be selfish. And so there are a lot of selfishness in the church. We are bringing the things of the world into the church. God bless you, Doreen, for coming on there. Are you listening? And when we do that, then we are confused. We are more confused. Than this. I mean, believers are more confused than, than the world. Why? Because we are not, we are not um, living. We are not living according to the plan of God. We are not living according to that which is given to us. Jesus says the advantage that you have, you the believer, you have is the fact that he, Jesus, has sent the helper. If you are just coming on there, look at um, um, John 16 verse, verse um, 7. Jesus sent the helper. Now, if the helper is here, why are we? Are you then trying to struggle for everything? And you have a helper who who makes things easy. You have a helper, but yet you are ignoring the helper, and we are doing everything. The reason why I believe that we are, you know, the church these days is, and then you see all these tribes going on, all this fighting going on. All this, you know, um, 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 craziness going on in the church is as a result of the fact that we don't understand who we are and we don't know who is with us. We don't know who is with us. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, we don't know who is with us. So since we don't know who is, um, is with us, how can we even know the work He is here to do in our lives? And so you must engage the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Very, very important here. Now, the Holy Spirit is here also. We're looking at um, the work of the Holy Spirit today. He is here also to convince men that Jesus is the Son of God and can be their Savior also. The Holy Spirit is here to also let men come to the known of that Jesus is the Son of God. All right? Is the son of God. Go, go with me to um, uh, John. Boy, I mean, telling you, I, I can't seem to get out of John to John chapter four. All right, John chapter four, verse. Uh, <clears throat> look at John chapter four. Uh, go with me there. The book of John chapter four, verse thirteen. All right, let's read some scriptures here. Jesus answered and said, uh, "To you know what? Um, for the sake of, um, for the sake of you." who may not know where we are, we're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, please write the scriptures down and go and read them for more understanding. Are you listening? So write this down, John chapter 4. Please read from verse 1. The background of this scripture is that Jesus was having um, a conversation or dialogue with the woman at the well. This, uh, this woman at the well. Okay, this Samaritan woman. At the well, okay, where it was, it was like you know, it it it, it just didn't look, odd, you know, look it didn't look well, if you if you if you will, because the the um, uh, the time the the Jews and the Samaritans were not bodies bodies. Are you listening to me? So now go and read it. But I, for the sake of this broadcast and my time. I want to just bring you to the place of understanding of what I'm talking about so that you will know where we are, okay? 
I'm talking about the fact that uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit also is here to convince uh, men that Jesus is the Son of God, okay, and that um, and, and Jesus can be their Savior as well. So John chapter four verse thirteen, Jesus is responding to this woman and said to her, "Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, okay." will thirst again, but who, verse 14 says, but whoever drinks of the water that I, Jesus, shall give will never thirst again, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So Jesus, what Jesus gives, Jesus is telling uh, this woman at the well that, hey, I am I am the Christ the Holy Spirit see now let me let me just bring your your attention to this the Holy Spirit is in Jesus operating operating through Jesus now remember that when Jesus was baptized okay before he started the ministry the Holy Spirit came upon him the Holy Spirit never left never left Jesus until when we just saw here that it is for our own advantage, it is to our own advantage, Jesus is saying that he has to leave and then send the Holy Spirit, okay, to us. So the Holy Spirit never left Jesus. So the Holy Spirit was operating through Jesus throughout his ministry. Are you listening? So now the Holy Spirit is in Jesus talking or or bearing witness of Jesus, the Son of God, here to this woman. And Jesus is telling this woman that the water that I, Jesus, give to you, all right, you will never thirst again. And as a matter of fact, look at verse, uh, verse 13 again. Jesus answered, uh, uh, answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst. All right? The woman was telling Jesus that, you know, uh, Jesus asked the woman water, um, and and uh, and the woman was saying that, how can you ask me for water? You know, you we Samaritans and you Jews, we don't, we're not body bodies, okay? Don't come, you know. And Jesus is saying that, hey, listen, let me tell you something, woman. Whoever drinks, even this water, will thirst again. Verse fourteen, Jesus says. But whoever drinks of the water that I, Jesus, shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in the person, in him, a fountain of water springing up into an everlasting life. A fountain. The water that I'm going to give you, it's, it's, it, will, it will turn into a fountain in you that you have everlasting life. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit also convinced men, okay, because the Holy Spirit bears witness to Jesus. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is now speaking out of Jesus to this woman that, hey, the person who you are talking to is the one who can give you that which is missing in your life. And so you may have everything and still not be happy. You may have everything and still not be con content. It's because you are missing Jesus in your life. You are missing Jesus. All right? You are missing Jesus in your life. So if you are missing Jesus in your life, beloved, you will never be a happy person. This world, which I just mentioned his name to you, Satan, he's already judged. According to 2 Corinthians verse 4, he is the... He's the the God of this world who's deceiving everybody. All right. The Bible says that he deceives the whole world. Satan deceives the whole world. All right. And so we see here uh, that this is what he does. So the, the Holy Spirit also, also shows men that the power of Satan is broken. The power of Satan is broken by Jesus in his death on the cross, in the finished work of Jesus, 
it, listen, the power of Satan is broken in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So sometimes now, you know, I, I, it makes me wonder, why do believers spend a lot of time, all right, giving attention to Satan? Why? Could your God bless you? Why do believers spend so much time in giving so much attention to Satan? And yet, the power of Satan is broken in the finished work of Jesus Christ. According to John chapter, uh, chapter 16, verse 11, the guy is already judged. So why are you spending more time? I mean, there's, uh, uh, there are times you turn on the the uh, you know sometimes I go I go on Facebook to uh, you know see other you know I, and I like to see other um, churches and all that what are you doing and all that and you see they spend more time about Satan 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 more time and to me it's like why I it's pastors why are you scaring the people why Satan 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 Satan, Satan. Unless, unless you, you don't slip, you are walking and you don't slip and fall. Oh, Satan did it. The enemy is against you. Some demon, his demons are against you and all that. And yet, and yet the Holy Spirit is here to let you know that the power of Satan, Aretha, God bless you, the power of Satan is broken by Jesus in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Are you listening? And if you don't even, if, did, if that didn't even stop there, Jesus went to Hades and took the keys of, of death and hell out of his hands. So why are believers spending more time in giving credence to Satan? Why? Look at the, the number of, I mean, the minutes we spend in praise and worship and the minutes we spend in fight in in in, in warfare warfare quote unquote kabaya baba i bind you i bind that i listen and and we repeat the same thing and yet the holy spirit is standing there and saying i am here to help you my assignment is to help you. I am the Holy Spirit. I am the helper. I am your helper. I'm your comforter. I'm your paraclete. I am your advocate. I am your teacher. I am your keeper. I'm the Holy Spirit. I am here. Hello. I'm standing here. I'm waiting for you to engage me. Why are you fighting this fighting this fight on your own? I am here. <laughs> hey, Arita, that's my new name, Reverend Patriotic. Well, I am very patriotic. <laughs> I am a I am a patriotic person of, of the kingdom. Amen. Love you, girl. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit is here to let us see that, that the power of Satan is broken. Are you listening? It's broken. The, the Holy Spirit is also here to regenerate, all right, to regenerate the sinner. All right, look at John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3. Stick with me to John. We're not leaving John today. John chapter 3, verse 5, all right? John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit. Jesus is speaking here. He says, most assure, assuredly, or I must assure you that unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit is here to also, it gives us, you know, that re, it regenerates, uh, okay, the sinner. It regenerates the sinner. 
And Jesus is saying here that verse 5 that I are and most assuredly, in other words, there's no debate, no question about it, that unless one is born of water and the spirit, talking about the baptism here. That individual cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6 says that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay? Do not marvel that I say this to you, um, that you must be born again. 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 You see what Jesus says? You must be born again. Verse 7. John chapter 3. Verse 7, Jesus says, you must be born again. You must be born again. <laughs> Arita, <laughs> Arita said, yes, patriotic in the word. Oh, girl, I love you. I love you. Amen. I am patriotic. See, if, if we can be patriotic in our position in what we stand and believe in. Beloved, you see, when Satan comes... And you tell him that it is written. It is written. He, there, there's no, there's no room. He knows there's no room for debate. I mean, follow. Jesus gave us the examples to follow. Jesus never tried to, you know, you know, spend much time in, you know, binding him. And he says, "Listen, Satan was even talking too much." He just said. Satan, get out, get behind me. I've told you it is written. It is written. And what is written is written. I know. Oh, listen, don't don't worry. This is I'm hitting, I'm hitting, you know, some serious part of him. So he's going to continue to interrupt, you know, the uh, the brokers. And I'm going to continue to speak. Oh boy, my time is just about over too. <laughs> Amen. So this is this is what it is. So know that know that his the, the 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 work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal all these things to us. Are you listening? So we see that Jesus is saying that you must. Yeah, the, the yeah the network is really Aretha. Now this one we say that then who controls the network? The Prince of the Air. He is a prince of the air. He is in charge of the atmosphere. He is in charge of the, the, did I say that? The media. This is his terrain. So when you are talking about him like this, he will make sure that he, he interrupts. Because very essential areas of that you, you must hear, he block it so that you don't hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And so, but if this, if this broadcast was to tell you all kinds of crazy things, trust me, everything will be so clear. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, don't forget. This is some of the. This is this is what we don't need to forget. He's a prince of the air. He doesn't have. He's he's he's, he's exerting his authority in his domain. So we take advantage of the Holy Spirit. And um, we conquer all that nonsense is doing. Are you listening? Now, I'm going to I'm going to end here with you today. I'm going to end here with you. Uh, we'll continue about the work of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue about the work of the Holy Spirit. So stay tuned. All right, stay tuned with me. Stay tuned with me and um, take all these notes. Please take all these notes and um, refer to it. Refer to it. Again, again, and again, 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 and again. Pastor New Love, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. All right. So, again, Jesus is saying that you must be born again. Jesus just said that. Jesus said it. All right. John chapter 3, verse 7. Jesus said it. You must be born again. You must be born again. Because that which is born of the, of the flesh is of the flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit exposes the, or, or, or testifies or bears witness to the things of Jesus. 
But the most importantly, for you, the believer, the Holy Spirit is helper, is our helper. So he's here. He's here. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is here to help us. Yeah, he is. Jesus says it is to your advantage and my advantage that he leaves so that the Holy Spirit will come, the helper will come. And so therefore Jesus left the face of the earth. I, I, I've, I, I, I've seen his footprints where he he ascended back to the hell, to the Father. If you go to Israel, it's there. I've been there several times. His footprints is there. Jesus' footprints, yes. Where he ascended back to the Father. And the Holy Spirit is here. Are you listening? So if it's so important that we understand this to know that the Holy Spirit is here to help us in every area of your life. Beloved, don't go through this, you know, this this life in this earth, which is controlled by the deceiver. All right? The guy who is deceiving the whole earth. He deceives all the nations of the earth. Satan. All right? He deceives all the nations of the earth. If you go to uh, Revelation, John the Revelator reveals that to you and I. In Revelation chapter 12, read from the, the, the seven verse down. All right? Okay, so you now you resist the Holy you resist the devil by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, beloved, be, the bottom line is without the Holy Spirit, you are no match to the devil. If you are a believer, get this into your head. Without the Holy Spirit, you are no match. How old are you? The guy has been around over thousands of years. How old are you? Jesus said to him, Satan, it is written. Jesus resisted, resisted him by telling him that that which is written cannot be annulled. Cannot be annulled. It is written. And what is written is written. What is written of you? What is written of you? What exactly is written of you? And do you realize that what you don't know is not helping you? Do you realize that what you do not know is not blessing you? And so believers, get this revelation. Jesus himself, the master himself, received the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was able to overturn, overrule all the dealings of the enemy. Without the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to be, be able to do nothing. Don't think you, 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 you speak in tongues two by four and you are any match of him. Are you kidding me? Don't, don't be fooled. Get this in real. This is a practical Christian life I'm talking about. Just know that that which God has given to you is your authority. Your power. Your power lies in the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Your power. That's why Jesus says to the disciples, the first believers, the first believers, the first believers, they rely more on the Holy Spirit. I'm talking the early church. The early church relied more on the Holy Spirit. The early church relied more on the Holy Spirit. These days, well, I mean, well, well, you don't even hear the name of the Holy Spirit in church. You don't hear the name of the Holy Spirit. And yet He's here with us in this dispensation of our time. He is here. Jesus is operating, still operating through the Holy Spirit in our dispensation. In the time of Jesus, the Holy Spirit operated it through Jesus. But Jesus is not here with us. The Holy Spirit is operating. So, so the Holy Spirit is operating through you and me, the believers now. Are you listening? Are you getting the revelation here? 
That's why Jesus said to the disciples, no, no, no. Don't go and start winning souls or talking about anything until the Holy Spirit is come upon you because that's how you do it. That's how the policy is. That, that, is, that is your full insurance. Are you listening? That's your full insurance. Without that insurance, nah. All right. So Jesus says in, in, in John chapter 3 verse 7, he says, you must be born again. You must be born again. If you don't know who Jesus is, beloved, I want to introduce him to you right now. And you need him. You need Jesus. If you are that individual, wherever you are, just close your eyes and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard this message and I'm convinced that I need you. I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. Now I accept you and I receive you. Come into my life as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for receiving me. Amen. That's it. If you pray that prayer, that simple prayer. Oh yes, Pastor, that's it. Yes, that's it. Believe it. All you have to do is believe that Jesus has accepted you. All right? Now let me pray for you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, baptize them now in the name of Jesus. Let them receive the power that has been sent to us to be your disciples on this earth. For the world do not know the Holy Spirit, but we do so that we may introduce him to the world in Jesus name amen beloved all the information you need okay all the uh, all the, the information you need is on your screen right now wherever you are all right please pick all this information you need to reach us in this ministry at uh, this ministry okay Emmanuel God bless you for coming but this is where we draw the curtain this is where we draw the curtain for the day all right until then I want you to know that you don't have no trouble and indeed we don't have no trouble all we need is our faith in God and in all thy getting get understanding when the Holy Ghost come upon you you will do great and mighty things you to know that you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting get understanding